right, God bless you all. So I have been going back and forth on whether or not I should release this dream. And I prayed about it and I asked the Lord, what do you want? And I heard the Holy Spirit say all or nothing. So either I release the dream in its entirety or I don't release it at all. Basically, I did have a dream on the Day of Atonement, which was like a week ago. I'm not gonna share that one because it was 100% personal. And then I had, and it was a great dream, by the way. It was a good dream, but I didn't see any significance for the church. And then I had a dream on the first night of the Feast of Tabernacles that we're celebrating right now. And this dream was also personal, but it was parts of it that I felt the church should hear. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you all the dream. And this was the night before last I had this dream. So anyway, the dream started off and it showed myself and this group of people, it was a small group of people, but we were together. This small group that I was with, like we worked closely together, but it was this massive, massive build. It was actually representative of a company I used to work for many years ago, my first job out of college. And it was just this massive building and many, many people worked there. I mean, thousands and thousands. I couldn't tell you how many people worked there. And so anyway, I was getting bitter. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was. I was getting bitter and I was tired and I wanted to leave. I really wanted to leave. And I kept leaving my job. I kept going to the bathroom. I kept walking around, just kept walking around aimlessly, taking a walk every chance I can get, taking extended lunch breaks, just kept leaving because I was tired and I really wanted to go. And let me say this as well. This night that I had this dream, the first night of the Feast of Tabernacles, I was very positive, very worshiping the Lord, very exuberantly worshiping God, no issues, had a wonderful night. And then I went to lay down and this dark, heavy spirit came and all this depression came and I was so sad and so depressed. And, and the same thing I've said before, why am I here? You know, what's the point? You know, I just, it was terrible. It was terrible. And I was saying the exact same thing in a dream. I was walking around like, I wish I was never born. Uh, you know, what is the point of my life? You know, why am I alive? And I was just really bitter. Like the dream was saying, I was just growing bitter. And so at one point I had went to the bathroom because I would, you know, have normal people go to the bathroom, but I would stay there longer because I didn't want to go back. And in the dream, I was my job was working on YouTube, working on you know my, my Facebook ministry, working online. That was my job. And the dream said I kept leaving, and that was surprising to me because to me it's like okay, well I haven't had any dreams, so I don't have anything to report, right? So I was like, I'm not leaving. I am working on my shift change video, and unfortunately, <laughs> it's taking me longer uh, than I would have liked for reasons I don't want to go into. It's just, I'm getting to it. Yeah, I'm still working on it. And I might have another video besides that that I need to get done. But the dream was saying I was leaving, which I was shocked by, because I'm saying thinking God is not really giving me much work. You know, I'm like, I'm not really having any dreams to release. But no, I said I was leaving. So anyway, at one point I go into the bathroom and Somehow I accidentally got, okay, oh, I forgot this part, the boss. There was a big boss and she came and she was just so happy, a black female. And I've seen this black female many, many times. And I know for a fact she is representative of God the Father. And for some reason, God the Father has come, you know, in the form of a black female. And sometimes he'll come in the form of a child that's a black female. But I've seen God the Father in just his form as a male as well. He came to me once and we talked for an extended long period of time. And he was in the form of a black male. And every time he comes to me in the form of um, black, he has really dark skin, like African dark skin. But he, I've also seen him with really light skin. You know, that's why I don't deal with people with 
hang up on color because God has come to me with different colors. It's ridiculous. But anyway, I want to go on. So in his dream, God the Father was representative of a black female. And he she was the big boss of everybody. And she very happily came around as the job was ending. In the dream, the jobs were ending. Like everybody was about to go home and it was just ending. But it wasn't like the end of the world. It was like ending until we come to work the next day. That's I had a note of that. Like it was ending for the day. So anyway, she came around and she gave us all these packages, these um, packets of paper in an envelope. And she was really happy about it. And we were supposed to, you know, take it home, read it, whatever, or read it there. But I took mine and I didn't even open it. And she, I, I just asked, what do you want? Like, what do you, what do we need to do with these papers? Cause I was all about, what do I need to do for my job? And let me get it done. Like the Lord literally showed me that. Like it was about, I was losing my passion. I hate to say that, but that is what God showed me. I was losing my passion. I was like, God, what do you want from me? Let me get it done. And that's it. Like there was no passion. So I asked her, I was like, okay, what do you want? And she said, I need you to sign it. So I opened the package and I looked through it, scanned through and saw where I needed to sign. Didn't read the document at all. Didn't know what I was signing. Just hurried up and signed it. Put it back. Um, I was going to put it back in the envelope, but it was in papers. Um, and I took it to the bathroom with me because I was still moping around. Oh, I'm so miserable. Why am I here? What's the point? What's the point of my life? All I do is let God down. All I do is make God say it. What's the point in my life? I was just talking crazy. And when I went to the bathroom like that and I was using the bathroom, it didn't show me actually using the bathroom, but it showed, and this is kind of gross, you guys, but this is the truth. I accidentally, and it was an accident. It was literally an accident. I accidentally got urine on the contract. And I believe that God was showing me that because I'm going to tell you what this contract meant in a minute. And he was showing my disregard for this contract. He was showing how I was not even, and which is true. I'm, I hate to say that. Everything God showed me about myself in this dream, it was the truth. It's hard for me. I'm trying not to cry because it hurts to be shown these things, but I know it's the truth. And he was showing my lack of care about this contract. So anyway, I went, um, I got it all wet. I said, oh, now I got it all wet and I need to go dry it off. And I just went walking around and in the dream, there was this corridor and it was a real long corridor. And I walked down there and at the end, it looked like the building came to an end, but actually there was a door that went um, there was an elevator. It looked like a door, but it was like you open it and it was just an elevator. And it went to these lower floors. Like it was a whole bunch of lower floors in the basement. And normally if you hear somebody working in a basement, you think negative, like those are the worst workers ever. But in the dream, these workers were the most advanced workers. They were in secret. They were working in secret. That's why it looked like it was ending. And if you look at the building from the outside, it looks not as big, but they were secretly working in these lower levels and it went on and on. I couldn't even tell you how many levels it was. It was massive. And these floors, I can't even, you guys, you're going to have to use your imagination. I can't even explain to you how big each floor was. I mean, just the length of it was just massive. And even the height of each floor was massive, not like a regular floor. It was probably five stories just for each floor it was massive and these people were the smartest people they were the smartest people in the company they were very very advanced and they was working on very very advanced work that we was not working on and also i forgot to say this you could not get to these floors you couldn't even get into the elevator unless you had a high clearance you had to have a special code and you had to have a key card and I had that. So whoever, you know, whatever my status was in a dream, I could go down there, I could talk to them, I could interact with them, but I had a knowing in the dream that a lot of people could not, they didn't have access to get to these people. And so I went down there and I would go down there often and just walking around. And I would just go walking around, moping around. And I saw them 
you know, doing their job. But like I said, the job was coming to an end. So a lot of people had left, like a lot of um, the people on all the floors, like even the upper floors where I worked, they had left. And it was a few people still there. And they had these like on, one, on this one floor, every floor was different because every floor they did different work. And on this one floor was these really um, high up computers, uh, you know, some kind of electrical computers. And it was they was in these glass cages. And I saw people in lab coats just walking around with like clipboards and they was talking. And let me say this to everybody that worked that was smiling from ear to ear. Everybody was so happy. I was the only one I saw that was miserable. Now, if it was other miserable people there, I didn't see them. I'll, the only person I saw moping around was me. Everybody was smiling ear to ear and happy. And everybody was just smiling and, you know, having a good time. And I was just walking around looking at them. And a lot of times I had my head down because I was just so sad. And anyway, I saw them and I took the papers because they was wet and I put them on some kind of board. It's like this blackboard. I think I used magnets and um, put it there to dry. And I, then I went walking around for a while and then I came back and it was dry, but it was stained. And I was like, oh, I can't turn this in like this. Just forget it. I didn't even know what the papers was. And I bought them up and threw them in the, in the garbage. And the dream said garbage. I threw them in the garbage like it was nothing. Didn't even know what they were. I went up, back up to my office, because I would only walk around every time for like 10 to 15 minutes because I knew I had to get back to work. And also the dream told me this. The dream said when I was working, I did an excellent job. It was, and this is not the first, I hate to say this, but this is not the first time God showed me this, the same exact thing. Man, if I can find that dream, God help us, Jesus. If I can find that dream, I'll put it in the description box. He showed me the same exact thing. He was like, when you're working, you do an excellent job. But I was late a lot. Like I was late getting to work a lot. But he said, when you're working, you do an excellent job. So, and that's how it was in his dream. It was like, I do an excellent job when I'm actually working. So anyway, I went back up and my team was still there. The people that I worked with, they were still, they hadn't left because they was happy. Everybody was clapping and exuberant and just like woo woo you know just really happy and I was like what's going on and I was like then you read the contracts and that's when I found out they were contracts and I was like what what contract what are you talking about those papers that she gave us and they said yeah and everybody was talking about it was a, a, a contract but it was also rewards it was all these different rewards and some people were saying like this one lady she was saying that she got and this lady was represented, and, and oh, I almost forgot to say this, the dream, and if you hear cooing in the back, my, I'm here with my granddaughter, and she's kind of, she's asleep, but she's kind of moving around, so she might wake up a little bit. But anyway, the dream literally told me that it was a symbolic dream. It literally said that this is a symbolic dream. <laughs> so I understand the symbology behind it all, and that's why I'm trying to explain it as I go on. And one lady, um, she had a gift her reward was like seven hundred thousand dollars, and and this is a lady that I know. I went to school with her actually. Her name starts with a T, and I have to say that so I remember her who it was later. Because if I don't say that, I won't even remember it. But um, anyway, she was there, and she got like seven hundred thousand. And this is not the first time I had a dream about this lady. This is so interesting to me. But anyway, she was saying how she got seven hundred thousand. And somebody else got seven million, and somebody else got ten million, and I was like, man, I don't even know what I got because I didn't read the contract. And you know, you think about the contract. That is symbolic for the covenant. You know, okay, the things are changing. There's a there's a new covenant that's coming. A lot of people think we have it right now. I disagree with that. I'm not going to argue with anybody about that because the Lord hasn't called me to, di to discuss that. But personally, I disagree with that. But there is a new covenant that's coming. And I believe that's what these contracts represented. And it comes with rewards. And so one person got 7 million, another person got 10 million. And I was like, wow, what did I get? Like, I don't know what I got, you guys. And they were so happy. And it was like, what did you do with the papers? And I said, I accidentally ruined them. And then I threw them out. I didn't know it was a big deal. So God was showing me my disregard for the rewards and he 
because he was ministering to me. And I'm not done with the dream, you guys, but I have to explain it as I go on because I'll forget things and I won't go back. I'm not going to go back and explain it later. But the Lord was showing me how when I get like that, when I'm in those moods of depression and it's a constant battle, it is a constant battle. God help us, Jesus. I'm literally, since I had this dream, binding and rebuking all day. I bind the spirit of hopelessness. I bind the spirit of bitterness. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of rejection. I bind it in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I bind these things. I have to say that all day, and that's how I've been fighting it. Last night, I went to sleep. No sadness, praise God, but it's a constant battle. And I, like I told my daughter, I said, this is a war. I'm in a war. I'm in a war. For hope. I'm in a war for happiness. I'm in a war for peace. Praise God. And God told me, he said, he told me this before and he told me again, focus on me. Keep focusing on me. He said, I am your peace. I am your hope. I am your happiness. Focus on me. And the presence of the Lord is a fullness of joy. So I'm fighting right now. But anyway, the dream was showing me that when I'm in those depressive moods, how I feel about this, the future. It's like you, you don't regard it. You don't, you don't even care. And it, that is how I felt like, how, like, like I don't care. I hate to say that, but that's how I felt. So anyway, I didn't know what I got. And I was really sad in a dream. Like, I don't even know what I got. So then the boss came in there, the big boss, and she came with... Uh, a man who was representative of Jesus Christ. So, you know, God a lot of times shows himself in two persons. That's just what he does. A lot of times he does that. It's the only one God, but he likes to show himself in two persons a lot of times. And I have discussed that in other videos, so I'm not going to go into that right now as to why he does that. And I could discuss it even more, matter of fact. <laughs> I certainly can, but I, I feel like I need to do a whole video to discuss that. I don't know. I don't know if I should mention it right now because it's something else that he showed me that I never discussed as to why he does this. But let me just th make a quick summary. He shows himself in the form of Jesus because he made that form to be more personable with, with us, to appear to us, to walk with us, to talk with us, to be more personable with us. But it's a lot more I want to say about that. But like I said, I will have to make a whole video about that. So anyway, he came and she came, the God, the father came in there with Jesus. And, and I know he's representative of Jesus because I've seen him many times. I didn't know what I had gotten. And then God, the father told me that my reward was more, this was her exact words. She said, your award is more than double than everybody's. That's what she said. And she said, everybody, she said, your reward is more than double than everybody's. Now I'm not saying it's more than double than everybody in the whole world. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying what she told me. Okay. Cause I hate it when people read stuff into what I'm saying. And I, I'm, I just, at this point, I just have no tolerance. <laughs> I'm fighting right now. I'm fighting for my life right now. I just, I just cannot. I don't have any tolerance for foolishness right now. But she said, your reward is more than double than everybody's. And she told me that I got 25 million. So, and I know other saints have recorded getting more money than that. Um, you know, whatever. But that's what she told me. She said, you got 25 million. And then... Praise God. I I was really sad and I said I need to find that cuz she she also said you cannot get your reward unless you turn in those papers. Point blank she said that. So I ran away. Like she was still talking and I just ran cuz I was so frantically trying to find those papers and Jesus came with me. He came with me and he was helping me look. We ran, we went down those levels looking at every level. I was trying to backtrack where I had walked to and I was looking through all kind of garbages and I noticed maintenance was going around emptying the garbages and I was like oh no they probably emptied the garbage and I couldn't never find where I had went because these floors once you go down to these different levels it was like a maze but no matter what you never get lost because if you go up to the top the first floor it was easy to find your way back to the elevator so it's kind of hard to explain like every floor was so massive and it was like a maze but if you go up to the first floor, it was, just, it was really a straight shot to the elevator, no matter where you ended up at. 
And so I never could find, because I had lost it in the lower levels and I could never find where I lost, where I threw it out at. And I was really sad about that. And so I went back to everybody and they were still happy and um, with everything. And I said, I can't find my, my papers. And then God the Father told me, it's okay. She said, I will write you another contract, but I can't give, I can't have it ready until tomorrow. She said, I'll write you another contra- contract, but I won't have it ready t- till tomorrow. And you know, I, and I'm not done with the dream, but I just want to stop and just say, thank you, God. I give God the glory for that. Cause I mean, he could have told me <laughs> game over, you know, <laughs> you don't get nothing, you know, but that was very nice that he gave me another chance and he said I'll I'll give it to you tomorrow but in the dream everybody else was cashing theirs in okay I mean that's what I saw in the dream and I still had no rewards because of my disregard for um for the rewards um because of my disregard and I got no rewards until the next day so anyway then the dream showed us we obviously left because the scene switched and it showed us all coming and i like i said i work with a particular group um in this dream and we came back to work the next day to go work in our cubicles but when we went to go work in our cubicles god the father told us that we was no longer working inside the building so with this new contract came new jobs and he said that now we're going to be working outside and we all walked outside and he started training us on our new job and everybody was doing different jobs. I saw that everybody got different jobs because we all specialize in different things. And he told me that my job was now to, and when he walked outside, let me say this too, he was in two forms, God the Father and Jesus. Jesus was there as well, but God the Father was doing the talking And so then he told me that my job was to like talk to people and talk to them in a way that wasn't like as if, how can I say this? Hmm. I'm not sure how to word this, but I had to talk to them in a way to get them to question their Christianity. It was professing Christians. They was all professing Christians, but they wasn't right with God the way that they needed to be. And I was supposed to talk to them in a way to make them question different things in their lives to get to a higher level in their lives with the Lord. And so this lady, he had this lady set up for me to talk to and it was a table and some chairs and we sat down outside and I just began to talk to her. And she was, you know, telling me about how she was a professing Christian and this and that. And I was just kind of asking her some questions, but I was upset in the dream because I said I was really good at my other job, you know, working on a computer, <laughs> doing my work. And I said, now I have to learn a whole new job. So I had complaint and I was a little, I was still like, how can I say this? The dream, God was showing me that this negative attitude was making me bitter. Okay. I hate to say that, but you know, I know it's bad, but I'm just being truthful. That's what he was showing me. And it was making me better. And I was still complaining. And I said, well, you know, now I have to learn a whole new job. And then, but I I shook it off because I cared about her soul. So I just began to um, talk with her about um, her life and get her question and some different things. And then after I finished the interview and she left, the lady left, God the Father sat me down to tell me his thoughts. And he said that I had a C. He said, oh, you got a C. And he said, don't worry. He said, it's your first job. It's your first time on the job. This is your first, you know, your first case. And he said, you're going to get straight A's and, and in the future. And in the dream, when she said I was going to get straight A's in the future, I saw a vision of, of all A's. And I saw them in the forms of regular A's. I saw A minuses and I saw A pluses. And I saw myself getting straight A's. And she was smiling at me ear to ear, by the way. When she was, when I had messed up the contract, she was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just write you a new contract and you'll get it tomorrow. And then she was like, oh, don't worry. You know, this is your first time on the job. You're going to do much better in the future. And she was telling me how I was made for that job. She said, you're good at this. You're going to do great on this job. She was so sweet and so kind. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yahweh. And I was like, okay, that's that's wonderful, you know. I th- I just thank God for never giving up on me. I just give God the glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So then the scene switched and we were like me and this team of people I was in. That's when I noticed in a dream that the dream also came with superpowers because everybody was talking about the different superpowers that they had. And I was just looking at them, but I was still sad. The dream was literally showing me that I was still moping around, still, still moping around. It was, it was terrible. (laughs) It's like, you know, I thank God because this is so true. It's like he was showing me like I do the right thing because, you know, like I want to do the right thing. So I do the right thing, but I was losing my passion and everybody's talking about their superpowers. I wasn't even trying to figure out what mine were. I seriously wasn't even trying to figure it out. I was still moping around. And they was and there was one guy, he could fly and he was he kept flying to the ceiling. And then he had took one person, this lady had held on to his back, and then he was holding this guy and he flew up to the ceiling holding him. And he was so excited. Wow, I can fly, I can fly. And then I heard all the commotion. And this man was with me. I don't know if it was Jesus or not, to be honest with you. But we walked together into because we was in separate. We was in different rooms. Like, how can I say this? Like the rooms was conjoined, like they was joined together. But we was still in different rooms, (laughs) if that makes any sense. (laughs) So anyway, I walked over there because I wasn't paying attention to everybody. And I just walked over there and I said, oh, I, I been could do that. That's what I said in the dream. I was like, I been, been could do that. And then I flew up to the ceiling like it was nothing. But when I was flying up to the ceiling, I said, oh, in the past, I've always had trouble getting back down, which is true in real life. And that's another story on its own that I don't want to get into. But then I noticed in a dream that I had mastery over getting down and flying and everything. It was pretty cool. And, you know, just in the past, the Lord showed me that flying has to do with my love for God, um, which I do love God, you guys. I mean, granted... I got issues. I'm not going to lie. And I'm fighting it. And I'm I'm really fighting. So help me God. And y'all, please pray, pray for me. Please pray for me. But I love God. I love him with all my heart, mind, and soul. And I really do think he is perfect. I really believe that. I really think he is perfect. And that's what makes me sad about all of this. Because I just feel like I'm letting him down a lot. I just feel like I'm I'm constantly letting him down. That's that's what makes me sadder than anything cuz he doesn't deserve that. He doesn't deserve that. He's he's a good god. I mean, he came off the throne. He came to this earth to to live and to die for our sins, to take our place on the cross. I appreciate everything that he's done. I appreciate that he's never given up on us. He's a good father. And I love him with all my heart. I just feel like sometimes that I'm such a disappoint disappointment. But um, I just thank God because God was teaching me on that too. Because he was like, you're not a disappointment. He said, you're, and, she, and you know, God the Father, he was so excited when he said it to me. He was like, your reward is double than everybody's. And I was like, really? Like, <laughs> you know, and I give God the glory, you guys. And I'm, I, you know, I'm grateful and for that, and I give God the glory, but I'm telling you guys, please, please, this is not a game. This is not a joke. I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for my life against depression, and I ask you all, please keep me in your prayers. I love you so, so much. Please. I mean, and, and I thought about that when I woke up and I was sad because he said he'll give me the contract the next day, and in a dream, I never got it yet, and it was still the next day. But, you know, I, then the devil was trying to bother me about that. You know, a day with the Lord is a, a thousand years, and you know, or a thousand years is a day. You know, how, you, how many days, you, how many years you're going to be waiting to get your work? It was just so crazy. And I love God because he comforted me. And he said, Shauna, remember the dream was symbolic. It's a warning, you know, get it. You know, you, you need to get happy. You need to rejoice. And I'm fighting you guys. And I'm I'm really... I'm just really leaning hard on God. I'm really leaning hard on God. I mean, it's it's taking every lesson he's ever taught me. But it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. Praise God. Um, 
that God is helping me. Anyway, I love you all so much. That was a dream. The takeaway is, you know, we was getting closer to this time, getting this new covenant, getting our assignments, our new jobs, getting rewards, hallelujah, and financial rewards and what all that details, you know, this supernatural heavenly income, getting uh, super powers, all the anointing powers that I've talked about in the past. And for anyone who's still very, very confused, especially new people, like, what are you talking about? You guys have really got to see a video that I did on um, the rapture of the 144,000. And I titled it that way because that's the way that the Lord addressed it to me. But I know that it, I believe, I believe that it includes anyone who is 100% ready um, at the coming of the Lord. And, you know, God is so merciful and kind. You know, and we don't want to lose our crown of joy. I've been warned of that. I'm saying that to myself. And so don't, you know, I'm talking about that right now. God has literally warned me of that many times, like not to lose my crown of joy at his appearing. And I pray to God I have my crown of joy at his appearing. But to be honest, you guys, he literally showed me that when he comes, I will be full of joy. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he showed me that because I was really worried about that. And he showed me, no, Shauna, when I come, you're going to be so happy. Oh, praise God. You guys, we got to hang in there. We got to hang in there. We still have work to do. Praise God. And um, that was a dream. I love you all. Bye.